Today I'm putting a Pache VL back together. So I do have my trigger in already. Sometimes that takes a little bit of time. So that's already in. And you can see it's all set, ready to go. So there, okay, that's what we have. So we have the shell assembly here. With the finger button. I call it the trigger. I guess the trigger is the whole assembly there. Um, yeah. You might have noticed, if you're new to airbrushing, I'm not sure, that there's a little rotating disc right here. And if you notice, as I rotate it, it's gonna move this. Let me see if I can get that close. If I rotate that, it moves this little guy back. See that? And that allows you to set where your needle is and how much paint and air is coming out. Well, paint. So I always keep that forward. And I'll fix that in a minute, but I always keep it all the way forward because I like the full range of moving the needle. All right, next thing we're gonna put on, we're gonna hold our trigger in place so it doesn't fall out. And the tip goes on next. This is a size three tip. I hope this focus is okay for you, not sure. It's hard to see what I'm doing. There's the tip, and then here's the air cap that goes over the tip. Now, let me point out something else here since I'm doing this. These threads right here, you can put beeswax on those. That just creates a better seal, and you won't have air coming back into your airbrush or anything, or out the sides, or whatever. But yeah, you can put beeswax here. I'm not doing that right now because I'm just showing you how to put it back together. There's the tip. The air cap goes on. I'm just hand tightening it. But your airbrush, when you first purchase it, will come with a small little wrench for around here. So you can tighten that. Alright. There's another part to our air cap. We're going to put that on. Just turn it on there. Like that. Alright. And this is the point at which I put the needle in. I'm going to put the needle in the back. See if I can see what, I can, what I'm doing here. There. Okay. And the needle is, can you see it coming through there? Let's see. It's right there. I'm not going to push too hard because you don't want it to come through. Just seat it kind of tight. All right. So now we've got the rocker assembly right here. This rocker assembly, the front moves back and forth, like that. And then the reverse end has some threads. And those threads are for your lock nut. So I'm just going to put this on. And I'm going to push this. 
know if you can see that. I'm sure you can see it. Push it all the way forward. And slide it in behind your trigger. You should be able to see it. Where'd he go? Oop, it's kind of sideways. There we go. Alright, so you see that in there? That's how it should be pressed up against the back. And then we have the spring. Put the spring on. And then we have the needle adjusting sleeve. That's the technical name. I'm gonna put that on too. And we're gonna turn it a bit till it's, you know, just kind of. Well, it's not gonna get real tight. That puts tension on your trigger. Like that. All right. What are we missing? We're missing the lock nut. This is an older lock nut, I believe, because none of my VLs have these. This, uh, or maybe it's from a different airbrush. I don't know. I think mine are a bit different than this. So that just goes right there. Now, how does this lock nut work? Well, thank you for asking. All right, I don't know if you can see this. There is a split in these threads. I'm not sure if I'm picking that up. Do you see the line down the middle of those threads? When you put this lock nut on, it tightens this. It tightens this around your needle so that the needle stays in place. There we go. Put that one on. I got the needle pressed tight, not too tight. And now, when I press down and pull back, the needle moves with it. You see it? That's what that does. This is the way I use my airbrush. I don't, I don't put the handle on the back, but If you want to protect it, see if I dropped this right now with a handle on, you're not going to hit that needle in the back. You're not going to hit the needle in the back, and you know what that would mean. That the needle would go straight through the airbrush, all the way through your tip there, and possibly destroy things and cost you a little bit of money. So. While it is a protective thing to have, I airbrushed t-shirts and the one thing I like to do between paint colors is I'll press down for air. I'll have a bottle of like a little bit of uh, water. You can use regular water or Windex and water, like a little mixer if you want to. Um, but to clean my airbrush out between colors, I loosen this, I press down the air, and I pull this in and out while the air is going through it. And then I do this, and then you spray on with your new color. Um, yeah, so that's all that the handle's for really is to prevent that. And when you hold an airbrush, I hold my airbrush like this, and I'm right-handed. So this is a double action. Single action airbrushes, you can press down, but not back. You can only press down and use an adjuster to make your paint come out a certain amount. I don't own a single action airbrush. I never had a need for one. Um, I think sometimes people that do uh, models and things use them. 
but I like that I can have more control. So, there it is. We put the airbrush back together. And there's the Posh AVL. See you in the next video.